Welcome to the Earth Science Classroom. We are looking at seafloor spreading, and this video is all about the mid-ocean ridge and the diagram that I do for my, my uh, students in the classroom and how we build it up and explain what Hess found in 63 using sonar, the tech that he used during the war for the US Navy, and he used it as the professor at Princeton to look at um, oceans, ocean floor, and the terrain of the ocean floor. Okay, so you have here in the middle of the ocean, the ridge. And we have the crust. So we have the seafloor, which we know is uh, level uh, horizons uh, and uh, beds of um, sediments, sedimentary rock. And then below that, looking at uh, pillars of salt, gabbro, um, and this makes up the oceanic crust. So we have the crust, and we have the lithosphere right here. And this makes up our plate, which we'll get onto later on. And the ocean, oceanic crust is mostly basaltic. So I'm going to put in basalt right here. I'm going to put basalt on this side as well. Okay. Now, the basalt is very important, okay, because he's going to find out some evidence, and other scientists will use evidence uh, on this, this rock um, to see the movement. So the ocean crust is very thin. Yep, that a bit nicer. So it's very thin. It's on average five to seven kilometers thick. Now, this is different to the continental crust, which could be an average 25 to 30 kilometers thick. So we have our ocean crust, and below that, we have our asthenosphere. Now, we're looking at the physical layers of the Earth's interior, which we've also gone through in a different video in greater detail. The asthenosphere is that weak area, okay, that has the LV. Z in it as well. And pretty much what you have is this solid, this solid crust technically floating on a soft plastic layer of the asthenosphere. And then below that, we can also identify that we have the mesosphere below that, which is part of the lower mantle. So this is all part of the upper mantle, but U-M. So what did Hess find? Well, Hess found that this ocean ridge is a very high underwater mountain range. Okay. And he, well, we can take samples of the ocean floor below the, origin, uh, below the uh, top layer of the sedimentary rocks get down to the majority of the crust, which is basalt. Now, basalt is an extrusive igneous rock. Now, thinking back to our rock cycle and our pathology videos, extrusive igneous rock comes from or derives from lava. If it was derived from magma underground, it would be an intrusive igneous rock, like an andesite or granite. However, this basalt comes from lava. So somewhere along this ocean floor, there must be a location where the crust is fractured, broken, split in split where there's a gap and up flows lava. So pretty much there must be a location on the ocean floor where there is an underwater volcano. And Hess found it in this ridge location. So he found the underwater, not mountain, but he found the underwater volcano range. And he found that lava was coming up in between the ridge. And it was flowing out like an underwater volcano, very uh, mafic or mafic, very runny, hot um, lava that came out in pillow formations. It was so cold 
on the bottom of the ocean floor, but the lava is so hot that it billows out like pillows, like little little balloons, and it forms this on the ocean floor, and it forms these high ridges on either side of the upwelling lava. So let's just do one plus one equals two. If there's lava coming up, there must be a source of magma that's feeding this upwelling of lava. And based on Holmes in the 1930s and the work with um, this, the, the sonar and Hess, the movement or upwelling of lava kind of led them to believe that there was movement of this melt, this magma material in the asthenosphere below the crust. Now also you can add in uh, the moho, which is the crust and mantle divide. So you can link up the seismic wave velocity, knowing that it speeds, it actually um, slows down in this area due to the, the partial melting of the rock in the asthenosphere uh, between 150 and 250 uh, kilometers, which is the LVC, LVZ. And if there's a little bit of lava that comes up through this ridge, then there must be more magma being pushed either side. So lateral movement, not all the, the magma coming up or upwelling can go through this small crack, fracture in the crust where the ridge is, and a small amount of lava goes through, the rest of the lava would go laterally. Because don't forget, this is a solid crust top, like a ceiling or a roof, where only a small, there's a crack, only lets a, a little bit through, and the rest would flow basically underneath it. So this is the where the basalt comes from, this upwind of lava, and uh, Scripps Oceanography Institute uh, looked at this ocean floor composition and found that the basalt that was right here, basalt that was in the ridge, right here, on either side, so it's symmetrical, either side, this ridge basalt was very, very young because it just kind of lava, it just came up and started to consolidate started to uh, crystallize and turn into basalt, that it was very, very young or new lava or new basalt, sorry. And as they went further away from the ridge, increased the distance away from the ridge, this same basalt, the same rock that was formed at lava obviously gets older. And that was the same on both sides. So as you progressively get further away from the ridge, the basaltic rock that, that makes up the majority of the ocean crust, the composition, gets older. So the discovery of this ridge by Hess led other scientists to do following research on the crust and also the age of the rock, the composition. And this new lava, this new rock, the new basalt that was formed from the uprising lava here at the ridge, that would slowly cool and the, the whole crust itself must be moving because this older lava, this older basalt, is only made at the ridge. So what they found was they found that the ocean floor is actually moving and it's moving in the same direction as these convection currents. So as the convection currents are moving themselves, okay, these convection currents in the sphere are moving, scientists decided to put, piece the puzzles together and realize that the crust, this solid layer crust, was being moved by the convection currents like a massive conveyor belt or a horizontal escalator, and it was slowly being moved away from the ridge. So that brand new basalt that was made at the ridge was slowly being moved with the crust further and further away from the ridge every year by a few centimeters. 
and they backed this up and they found conclusive evidence uh, using satellites later in the 60s and 70s because they thought that, okay, well, if that's the case in this Atlantic Ocean example that Europe and North America must be moving, moving away from each other and, they must, and the Atlantic Ocean must be increasing in width. And using satellites to get, gain a more larger perspective and more scientific detail, they proved using satellites that Europe and North America are, in fact, moving away from each other very slowly by the matter of seven centimeters or three to four inches every year. And this was away from that mid-ocean ridge that was found by Hess in 63, and the rocks are one of the main ways to prove ocean floor is moving. Guys, if you like the video, please subscribe. Uh, next video, I'm going to look at uh, paleomagnetism and the second piece of evidence to support the, the uh, seafloor spreading um, discovery with Hess and two gentlemen called Vine and Matthews.